Hey guys, how are you today? We are coming on to talk about It Start With You. This is going to be a really good topic because I'm going to help you understand how important it is for the herpes community that you start with yourself. Um, as much as we say, you know, we need a cure and, you know, we need a vaccine, but to do that, it's going to start with you. So stay tuned so I can explain to you how it all start with you. See you soon. All right, guys, we are back. We are back. We are back with the top of It Starts With You. As you know, I am Belise Spivey, the STD Life Coach. I help African-American women living with herpes. Guys, y'all know I help so many different um, women, so many different men. Men, you are welcome. Don't ever feel like I'm leaving you out. Other races, other ethnic groups don't feel like I'm leaving you out. But I focus on African-American women because, number one, I am one. And on top of that, number one, African American women are on the map for herpes, okay? So I really want to focus on the target group that needs the most help, which I fall within. Okay, so how herpes start with you? How do we change the herpes community? It all start with yourself. And you want to know how to start with yourself? Number one is you being educated. Guys, this whole thing of I don't know and I'm confused is not a reason not to know. OK, um, we have too much information out here now. Um, yes, the information can be very confusing on Google or things like that. But you have credible sources as myself and so many other YouTubers on here and also CDC, also American Sexual Association, also um, STD Project, also getting tested website is no reason not for you to know a basic essentials of how herpes function. OK, now when you get into the situation ships and the situations, you know, it gets a little complex because um, when we look on these sites, you're looking for exact questions. You're looking for exact answers. And you're not going to always get that. And I know that's kind of hard when you're looking for something pertaining to you. Okay? But I want you guys to understand, you can still get the information you need if you are just open to getting the information. So, a post I did today, I said, you know, educating yourself about herpes starts with you accepting your status. And you cannot accept your status if you're in denial, stating why me. This is literally what I said. If you keep saying why me, why me, why me, you're in denial. If you're in denial, you're not in acceptance. If you're not in acceptance, you're not educating yourself. Guys, so right now, and most importantly, what you need to do is, number one, get out of denial. Oh, I don't understand why it happened to me. You want to know why it happened to you? It's because you had sex. That's just pretty much it. You know, my whole thing is, and for my individuals, and I like to say this because right now, individuals are dealing with rape cases. They're dealing with molestation cases and things like that. That, not your fault. Okay? That's not your fault. For my individuals who are virgins, and you kiss somebody or you let him perform oral sex on you. Choice. That's a choice. Okay? Let's stop taking our choice out of it. For our individuals who were taken advantage of, you're on another spectrum. Okay? This doesn't pertain to you. But um, for my individuals, but still you also need to take from this as well. But you, for my individuals who you, you had, you made the decision to have sex, you made the decision to kiss that individual, you made the decision to perform oral sex on him or he performed oral sex on you, this is also for you too. So I want us to understand you can't always stay in the why me, why me, why me phase. If you had a choice to to choose and you did it but you wasn't educated then you end up here you end up right where you are today this is the why you the why you is because you wasn't educated okay for my individuals who are dealing with the molestation case and a rape it ain't no why you that is the why did they have to take advantage of you is the real issue and you got to ask what is their problem why they thought it was okay to take something from me okay um and that's not an answer you would probably ever get from that individual and if you get the answer it may not be what you want to hear because we believe if i get an answer from my attacker or the person who took advantage of me then they give me closure Chances are slim to none because at the end of the day, they're not going to give you the answer you want. And sometimes we feel like they're trying to cop out why they did what they did, okay? Um, for an individual who has been in a rape situation or been and have, and have been molested, guys, you got to understand, it doesn't matter what your attacker tell you. You feel like your life been snatched from you. And it takes time for you to face. And also, you got to understand that they have their own mindset on things. Sometimes they truly don't believe they did anything because at the end of the day, they have mental disorders. They have dealt with trauma of their own um, and they cannot explain to you why they did what they did and why you know they think it's okay or why it's so pleasing to them to take something from another person you 
that's a sickness. Like, there's something that they need to go counseling for and also for you to go to counseling for to really get to the root and the toot of um, why it's taking you a minute to kind of like release it and heal from it. Guys, as anybody have been watching the R. Kelly documentary, I did not watch the documentary because I lived the documentary many times in my own life. Um, I don't need anybody telling me. I kind of heard, um, I heard his ex-wife's story prior to um, even coming out. So I know the story. I didn't even want to hear the rest of the stories, but I knew her story already and I was just sickening. It was just sickening what he used to do to her. So I can only imagine what he did to the other young ladies, okay? And I also listened to Faith Rogers' um, story as well. As y'all know, he allegedly gave her herpes. So y'all know I'm backing her. If she got it, I'm backing her. I'm, I'm her advocate because at the end of the day, we know how hard it is living with herpes anyway. So my whole thing is I already knew it. So Look what these ladies are doing. These ladies are coming out. They're not in denial no more that he's a predator. They're not in denial anymore that um, he's taking advantage of them. Now they're standing out. They're at, they educated themselves. You know, they went to go get it, probably got their own personal counseling. You know, learn what happened, what they could have done to prevent it, or what they couldn't have done to prevent it or whatnot. You know, typically a lot of situations happen because you, we're just simply not educated in those areas. And we end up living out negative consequences for things just not knowing. As many people will say looking at the documentary and i'm using this for this um for example for a reason okay so many people was like well it's their fault they should have known better everybody knew he was pedophile everybody knew um you know he took advantage of women you know, everybody knew he was abusive everybody knew all these things my whole thing sadly say everybody did not know that okay so since everybody did not know that then why would they do that and then when you fall in love with somebody when you have a person manipulate you to believe there's something else and not what they really are then you start blocking out what people say you start saying no they're just talking he showed me another side of him he's loving you know he's vulnerable he's sharing me you know deep dark secrets about himself and struggles that he had um he told me that he'd been molested and all this other stuff so you start falling for them thinking okay they may have done some of these things but not because they want Wanted to. I'm sorry, guys. My phone keep dinging, but I don't even know where it is. Oh, it's in my pocket. Um. So I want you guys to understand that uh, individuals who do things like that um, are pretty good at manipulating you. Okay, they make you believe, you know, what they want you to believe about themselves. And um, after a while, you come to learn they they lie. Okay, but when you are in the beginning, you believe in them because you have no choice. You don't know them that well. You want to believe that they're not what other people say and then we always say you know don't listen to what other people say get to know me for yourself and then you make a determination of who you think i am and that's kind of what happened in this situation as well because these ladies kind of learn him and he manipulate them to believe that he was something that he really wasn't yes he was still telling his truth in it but he 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 made it seem not as bad or not all of that is true not and truthfully, it was, but they learned that on their own after putting so much trust in him and he had so much control over them, it was kind of hard to get out after being controlled for so long or at a point where your life is at risk. It's kind of hard to choose to uh, run or try to stay alive in that moment. It's like, which one is worth taking? Deal with it at the moment and then try to get out later or run and die in the process or dang there, go through 10 times worse trying to get out. So if you've never been in that situation, I would strongly suggest you not say anything because you've never been there. You don't know how how difficult it could be especially as a woman a woman cannot overtake a man as hard as she can yes we can train we can do all these things like that but we got to understand he still has a, a strength over us um and when you love a person that you as a woman when we love a person we don't even want to hurt them we don't want to hit them we don't do any of those things and we'll take a lot of abuse from them sometimes even though when we know it's wrong and we should defend ourselves we tend to not do it because like, i love you i don't want to hurt you i don't want to do these things to you but that's not always the case on the man's side okay so, with all that saying, I tied that in to kind of tie this all together to say it's important for us as a herpes community to start with us. So, that's number one, getting out of denial. Stop doing the why me's, why me's, okay? Doing the why me's, why me's are going to keep you stuck in denial and you're never going to move forward where you can get to acceptance and really educating yourself, okay? So, after you get out of the denial phase where you just understand, okay, this happened to me, this is my story, okay, I don't like it, but this is it, um, and then you understand, okay, what could I have done? What, what, what tools would have helped me to prevent from this happening? And when you start to learn that you did not have those tools in your tool belt, then how would you have prevented it? So why are you keeping saying, why me, why me, why me's is punishment to us. We don't understand that you're punishing yourself when you keep asking the why me's, why me's, because at the end of the day, half of the time you did not have the tools to prevent that from happening to you. 
Okay, and when you don't have the tools, things happen, and it's sad, but it truly do happen to you. Even individuals who may have the tools, they are still lacking one or two tools that could have prevented the situation or could have got them out the situation a ten times faster. Okay, not saying that the situation didn't happen. Okay, so. When you get at the why me phase, now you can start easing into the acceptance phase. The acceptance phase goes with the educational piece, okay? So, as you educate yourself, you're just opening yourself to learn about herpes, okay? You're learning everything you can learn. I mean, learn type 1, type 2. Learn about the other herpes um, things. Just learn about herpes, period. Herpes has so many different types, but it's only nine strands that would affect a human body okay so we are used to you know herpes simplex one and two as we all i always tell you guys one and two don't really matter it's good to know the types but we're at a point where many doctors are trying to get rid of it but when you get tested they still test for them um truthfully because most people do have oral herpes which is quote unquote type one herpes most doctors don't like to consider testing for that because at the end of the day many people have it already and it's not always contracted through sexual activity. It's simply kissing family members, things like that, just being loving and, you know, greeting family members. But we also need to, they still need to test because your mouth is also used as a sexual tool during sex. So, you know, they're doing that thinking like, okay, we're trying to prevent from, you know, a hectic where a four-year-old come in here and they find out they have herpes, um... And we don't cause an uproar with the parent thinking somebody touched their kid or anything like that. But the parent didn't know. Cold swords and fuel blisters, herpes, and they've been kissing on their child the whole time. So it's just like they're trying to alleviate the uproar that it can cause, okay? Even though it's causing us still an uproar within the community because many people have it. And they was like, that's not fair because you did not tell me, okay? Um... But that's the catch 22 to it, you know. But if we want that to change, then we got to tell them that that ain't okay. And you're going to tell people or we're going to have a problem. Like, because at the end of the day, I'm in this situation because you chose not to say nothing. And you're telling my doctors, you know, when you train them not to say anything, that's bull crap. Um, so, that's that. So, you need to educate yourself as much as you can. Learn it as much as you can learn. Um, and ask questions. My whole thing is, it's okay to ask questions. But do your research. My whole thing, a lot of people are asking similar questions. Y'all ask the same. I'm not going to lie. I get the same questions all day long. And sadly to say, I say these things to you guys every day. And it's still not resonating. And you want to know why it's not resonating? It's because you're stuck in the why me phase. Most of you guys are still stuck. Why me? Why me? I would never think that would happen to me. I don't understand. I'm still mad at him. You can't get no information through no person who are in their emotions. I'm going to be honest. If you're still in your feelings about you having herpes, you're not hearing anything I have to say. Even for your daughter, many people go in there and they be like, I'm trying to tell you you can live a regular life. And they're trying to give you everything they can give you. And you, they'll tell you you're not listening. And you're like, yes, I am. We're like, I know for a fact you're not listening. Because if you were listening to me, you would get out of your feelings. You'll stop crying for a minute and say, okay, it's possible. Let me hear what they're saying. But when you're in your emotions, it blocks the ability to um, hear. Okay? It bl Listen to me. When you're in your emotions, you block your ability to hear the information that can simply free your soul. To free you to realize that your life is not ending but when you're in your feelings you can't hear nothing you can't see nothing you are just letting your feelings flow and control you and then you are wondering why you're still stuck where you are so my individuals who are still in your feelings i don't care how many questions you ask me i don't care how many questions you go in doing all these sessions or reaching out to other activists we're all telling you the same thing and you're thinking like, well, they're not listening to me or it's not clicking. It's not clicking because you're in your feelings. Okay. So my whole thing is just be in your feelings for a while. And when you're ready to get the proper information, then come when you're ready to hear it. But no point of coming and try to seek out information when you're not ready to hear it. It's a waste of your own time and whoever else that you're seeking out information from because they're looking like, well, you're not hearing me. I'm just talking just to be talking. I'm just wasting oxygen. <laughs> like, I'm wasting air right now that I can be keeping in my body, <laughs> you know. And that's not a mean thing. We want to help you guys. But at the end of the day, what we're not helping you just talking to you and you ain't listening. Okay, that's what I want y'all to understand. If you come to me, and I'm going to speak for me. If you come to me and I know that you're not listening, I don't say too much else. Because I know you're not listening. And most of the time, I'll tell you, you're not listening to me. And you say, yes, you are. I, say, I know you're not because you're still talking about your feelings. I don't care about your feelings. I ain't even gonna lie. Like feelings don't matter. It, you can get, you gotta get over it because at the end of the day, at this moment, you have herpes, and you being in your feelings is not gonna keep you. It's gonna keep you from learning how to manage the virus and to live a normal life. 
the quicker you get out your feelings, the quicker you can learn that you can manage this thing. And it may not be even as bad as you're making it seem. But since you're in your feelings, your feelings making it seem like you're dying. And you're going to get HIV now. And, you know, I'm going to have outbreaks out of this world. And the sad part, half of y'all ain't never had an outbreak in your life. And you're freaking out. Or you had one bad outbreak. Ain't had one since. And you freaking out. Like, breathe. Get out of your feelings and breathe. <laughs> like, clearly. Get out of your feelings and breathe. Your emotions will keep you from living the life you want to live. And that's pertaining to anything in your life. Any element of your life. If your feelings are heavily involved, I will tell you, your 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 wherever your feelings are heavily involved, especially if they're negative feelings, your life is on halt at that time. It's on complete hope. So, for example, if you're in a relationship and you are, like, negative, oh, my God, this is not going to work, I believe he's going to cheat on me, blah, 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 the relationship goes downhill. Because he was like, first of all, girl, I ain't even did nothing to you. Like, girl, like, you tripping. Or, boy, I don't understand why you think I'm going to be your ex because I ain't it. And after a while, you, get a, you turn a person off, okay? Because at the end of the day, they're not about to keep trying to convince you. Nobody got to convince you nothing. Nobody can convince you that you can live a regular life. Nobody got to do that. Like, I want y'all to understand you are not entitled for anybody to do nothing for you. Okay? I just want us to understand that when you go into the doctor's office, they tell you the information. They say, go. Because they're not going to sit here and continue to convince you. Our job is not to convince you. As her, uh, activists, as um, life coaches, as counselors, we our job is not in convincing you. Our job is to figure out where your head at and I help you where your head at. If I realize you're in your feelings, simply, I won't tell you no information. What I started to do is start focusing on your feelings. Because I'm looking like, why you keep feeling like that? What's keeping you there? And people don't like when I do this because I did it in my group. <laughs> and I started telling people like, uh-uh, you stuck. Like, And I'm going to tell you why. And you can do this. But my whole thing, if you stay stuck, they ain't change what I told you because I know what I told you is good information. But if you don't want it because you in your feelings, you're going to stay right out. And I'm going to be looking at you like, like you can, you can live a love like life. You can do this. Fear doesn't have to get you, but you don't understand that. And since you don't understand that, you're going to stay right there and you're going to see everybody bypass you who are probably in worse situations and they listened and they did what they need to do. And voila, their life starts to blossom and you're still sitting where you are. It's because you're still in your feelings. Get out your feelings. Okay. I really, I'm going to get a shirt that says get out your feelings. Um, because at the end of the day, we stay in our feelings too long about herpes and you don't have to. You really don't when you have so much information available to you. So, like I said, it's very important that the acceptance piece comes with the education. As you read more, you start to accept more. You start to accept, okay, herpes is manageable. When you start getting into groups and you start reading people's stories, um, you start to understand, okay, this is possible. When you start reading, you know, different things or even seeking out information from your doctor and your doctor was like, oh, girl, yeah, you'll be fine. Or you got a friend who has the virus or you got a friend who's a, a nurse practitioner or, you know, OBGYN. And she's like, oh, girl, no, girl, you, you fine. You can go through this. And now you're at a place that you're not in your feelings, but you're really seeking out the information. You're starting to listen. You're like, okay, okay, I'm starting to, okay, I, I can accept this thing. But a lot of you guys will never accept herpes. And I'm going to say never because you're going to stay in your feelings too long. And then while you stay in your feelings too long, it started to kill you. You started to get depressed. You started dealing with anxiety. You still doubt, start dealing with panic attacks. You start getting suicidal. You cannot be in your feelings and think that you're going to be okay living with herpes. You will not. Like, you got to get to a point. And if you hear any of the activists, you can tell that we just, like, we don't care. And it took us a long time to get there. It took me seven years to get to a fully, I don't care, herpes won't keep me. And I was in a full marriage by the time I did that, okay? Just because you get married, just because you're in a relationship, just because you lay down and have a kid will not change if you accept herpes or not. And I think y'all need to stop believing. And when I get these things, I'm going to be happy. I'm sorry. Chances are slim to none. If you are not happy, you are not happy. Those things are not going to bring you happiness. You must, and you must, get out your feelings about it, accept it, and educate yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay? A lot of us think those are quick fixes. A man is not a fixer. A child is not a fixer. Marriage is not a fixer. A woman's not a fixer. They're not fixing your life. They're assistance to your life. They, they, they... They um, reveal and expose what's already there. If you're in a relationship and the relationship seems like out of whack, chances are one of y'all or both of y'all are out of whack. 
if your children are at like plum fools and they're cussing, fussing, echo, chances are you are the same way. I'm sorry, your environment reflects you. Let me say that again. Your environment reflects you. If you do not like what you see around you, you need to check you because you're sitting in it. I'm just saying. You're sitting in it. A lot of us don't want to deal with the reality that we're stuck living with herpes at this moment or the, the stigma of herpes or the stench of the, the, the shame and the rejection and the doubt and the fear because you are in the environment and you're staying in the environment and people are trying to lead you into a better environment that's positive and educational and accepting and you like, mm -mm, I don't want that. Well, if you don't want that, you can't get mad at us when we're trying to tell you something, when we're trying to encourage you, when we're trying to help you. And then you're looking like, mm, they don't understand where I'm coming from. You're right. We don't because we ain't there no more. We ain't there. We ain't living it no more. We are not trying to convince you to stay there, but we're trying to encourage you to get on this side. But you have to do the necessary work that only you can do. It's nobody else's job to do your work. Y'all going to hear me say this all year long for to January 2019 to December 2019, you're going to hear me say, do your work, do your work, do your work, do your work. I'm only saying that because every individual who have came through me through life coaching, who have done their work, they are in successful relationships. Okay? They have got into a relationship. They've been able to disclose. If the relationship ended, it has nothing to do with herpes. Okay? So I'm telling y'all to do the work because I know for a fact it works. It works. I got into a relationship. I just realized he wasn't the best guy for me. Herpes was not the deal breaker. The deal breaker is things about him and things about myself. We just wasn't a good fit. Okay? And that's another thing I want y'all to tell y'all. And, and that's all I'm going to say about this topic. Don't think herpes is going to be the end all be all. It's other things that's going on in your life. It's other personalities. It's other characteristics that you need to take in consideration. Of. You don't need to just be worrying about him accepting or her accepting you about herpes. You need to make sure this person's a good fit. They're gonna fit into your life. They're gonna fit into your calling. They're gonna fit into your lifestyle pertaining to you and your children if you have any. Are they going to fit into your busy schedule if you have a really busy career? Are they okay with you traveling all the time? Do are they are they doing um? I don't know who that is. Are they um needy? Do they feel like they need to talk to you all day, every day? If you don't like that, don't start that relationship because he ain't going to stop and she ain't going to stop. They're going to start catching attitudes after a while because they want you to talk to them all day. Sorry. People busy. Nobody about to sit on the phone with you all day. Money ain't getting made like that. Work got to be done. Okay, so with that being said, guys, I want y'all to make sure y'all are just not looking for somebody to accept you with herpes. You're looking for somebody that is going to be the all-around package and benefit to your life. Herpes is not the only thing. It's a focus to accepting you. My whole thing. It's just not the only thing. And that's why a lot of people are getting into relationships. And they're like, oh, my God, he accepted me. And then not long later, you're out in the relationship, me in general. I didn't care about him accepting me, but I started to see his true colors later. We were friends, Okay. We were friends, but you got to realize men and women friends are two different friends, okay? Me and my girlfriend friends, I know everything she ever did, who she ever been with, who she don't have sexual relationship, who she been friends with. I know her mama, I know her daddy, but when you're friends with a guy, they, you don't know as much as you would know with your girlfriend. Men don't communicate like us. They don't open up as much as we do. They do. They trust you. They're telling you stuff, but they ain't detailed like women. They just not. So when we were friends, I learned a lot about him pertaining to his past, parents, things like that. Um, but as I got deeper into a relationship, I realized he's not relationship quality. I was like, oh, no, no, it's things about him. No, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to go with my lifestyle. Um, uh, he just ain't going to do. And I ended it, okay? So my whole thing is the sense that I knew herpes wasn't an issue, now I got to really see you for you, okay? And if I see that you're not it, I address you. After I address you, then I leave you if it don't get fixed. Okay. Um, so just giving y'all a tidbit of or giving y'all an example and know that I know what y'all talking about, how y'all feel. Don't use herpes as your indicator that, oh, you're gonna fall in love, have children, get married. That's not it. Like her herpes is just a, a gate opener to see if he even if he even like you or she like you for real. Because honestly, most people are just scared of STDs, not because they want to be. It's just because of stigma behind STDs, believing that you're nasty, this and this and that. And that's not the case. Um, I talked about not having STDs, um, not having STDs this year, basically. And I did that on my um, on my 
my Facebook page. So if you want to go to my Facebook, it's Belise Spivey. I did a um, video on there. It's about an hour. I didn't mean to be on that long. But I talked about ways to prevent from getting a STD. Okay, guys? And I'm going to do another video. Hopefully, I can get that live off and put it on here. Okay? I'm going to show to figure out how I can do that on my YouTube. I used to do it before, but I got to figure out how to do it again on my, on my Mac. But, um... But with that being said, guys, it's very much possible for you not to contract another STD or get an STD, but it's certain things you must do to prevent that from happening, okay? It's things you have to do. I'm not going to go into that because this video is not about that. You can just go to my Facebook page and you can watch that um, that live. Um, or, you know, matter of fact, I'll put it below so you guys can just click on it and go right to that live. Um, so it's just for you guys to understand. It all starts with you. If you want the herpes community to change, you need to change first. We can't expect to get anything if we're not changing. We got to be the change that we want to see. And honestly, we're not there yet. We got a lot of work to do because a lot of us need to get out our feelings about this virus and learn what you need to learn and also listen to other people who've been there, done that, and living the life that you want to live. Nobody's just talking just to be talking. We all have herpes with you. We ain't just a poofed up and got a cure and then tell nobody. That ain't the case. Many people ask me, but do you really have herpes? I really do. It just don't affect my life. Are you having outbreaks? Yes, I do. But I don't let it affect my life. But Lisa, are you dating? Yes. Herpes does not affect my life. I got a career. I got a businesses. It's not affecting my life. How's your mental state, Belize? I'm good. Because I'm not letting herpes affect my life. If I have stress, if I have anxiety, typically ain't got nothing to do with herpes. It's pertaining to how I'm going to get this money for something. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Like, that's where I have majority of my things. Okay, God, I want to do this. I want to do that. Help me you know, to trust you for the finances. Okay? It ain't herpes. It used to be, but it's not anymore because I accepted it. I got out of denial, figuring out how the heck did I get here. And then I educated myself. So I challenge you guys to do the exact same thing. So I hope this helped you guys in so many ways. As y'all know, you know where to find me. Make sure you sign up for a session, bit slash I have it. The session starts from 30 min um, 60 minutes all the way to 15 minutes pertaining to anything from reading your test results. I just have a new service now. Reading your test results for you. And getting on the phone with me so I can talk to you and explain those test results to you. Going to doing, um, ask questions, quick questions that you need confirming on. My whole thing is when you come ask me a question, I really want you to do your research. Don't waste your energy on the phone if you can research it on your own. Now, if you research it and you need clarity, boom, that's what I'm here for. That's what that 20-minute session is for, for you to get clarity, not for you to get basic information that you can find on your own. A lot of us are just not doing the work. You're not doing anything, and I can tell when you're not doing it because you come ask me a simple question you could have found on CDC website or you could have found on American Sexual Association, and it's clear. The answer is as clear as day. Or you could have watched my video, and my video told you the answer. Some of you guys just want to be on the phone. That's fine, but don't waste your own time. Be on the phone for clarity. Don't be on the phone just for basic information that you can find. Don't do that. Like, I really want you guys to utilize your time effectively when you're on the phone with me because you want real clarity. Because if you got on the phone with me just simply to ask me, Belize, um, I'll use an example. Uh, can I still get herpes uh, with a condom? And you know you can look that information up. You wasted a minute that you could have been asking me a situation ship. Something that was going on, you needed clarity, you know, or you was like, okay, well, at least this is my going on. I'm having outbreaks. I know all my triggers, but it seems like I'm still having outbreaks. Can you help me kind of pin, pinpoint what could be it that I don't notice? And now I can start like, okay, list off again. Tell me what was going on in your life so I can dig down and then we can look that up. That's what I want y'all to do when y'all go on these sessions. Don't waste y'all time. <laughs> y'all time. Not even me, but don't waste your time getting on the phone for a simple thing that you can look for. Get on the phone for something that you can get clarity on. That means I did my research and I just need clarity. Okay? I'm just telling y'all. Use your time wisely, guys. Don't don't waste your time on things you can find on your own. Or simply ask in a support group. Okay? Um, so we have the 20-minute sessions. After that, I have disclosure sessions that I teach you how to disclose. Find out everything about your relationship. Find out how y'all communicate. And I help you build a script for that. That's 30 minutes. 60-minute session is basically I am helping you across the board. So you want to talk about multiple different things. You want to tell me your story. You want some encouragement. You need some more extra information for clarity. Um, things like that. Boom. That's where I'm at. 
Okay, so you have all of those things that is available to you. All right, um, as y'all know, all seven cities are available for to purchase your ticket for the Overcoming Gathering Conference Tour 2019. All the tickets are available. Everybody from Atlanta to North Carolina to uh, Alabama to te uh, Texas, Houston, New Orleans, um, and Maryland. Everybody is available right now. What you need to do is know what dates I'm coming. And when you go into the event, right, you go to that date and you get your ticket. The ticket is 120 for both of uh, both days. First day, you will have a one-on-one -on -one session with me that you can talk to me about whatever situation, whatever clarity. If you want to wait, you got your opportunity there. And then the second day is an educated field day where I will speak on the, um, things that's going on in the community and just give you guys some encouragement. I will have somebody out of your community come and speak on herpes, how they can assist you or what's going on within the herpes community to be beneficial to us. We're going to also have a fun activity teaching you guys how to disclose. So we're going to do that activity is going to be really fun. It's going to be really, really fun. So you guys can walk away knowing how to disclose and go away with the script. Because um, most of the time, most people are not dating because they're not, they don't know how to properly disclose. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to have a QA and a session where you don't have to stand up and talk. But I will have you write it off on an index card when you first sign in. And then I have my host read it to me so I can answer your questions. So that is the Overcoming Gathering Conference Um tour 2019 that is really exciting going to seven cities i am so pumped um i keep having a lot of people ask me about different cities but it all depends if more people want to come to the city i love you i'm just not coming for one person it costs me a lot of money to get these rooms um and secure things it, it ain't cheap y'all so with that being said uh i want y'all to understand if i'm coming there i need a good number of people wanting to come my whole goal is to have 30 to 50 people in each city come out I believe I'm going to blow out that even more because at the end of the day, I have connected with a lot of you guys. You guys have been watching me for a while. So I at least want 30 to 30 to 50 people in each city because my whole thing is I want you guys to connect with each other. I want y'all to see each other. I want y'all to understand you're not the only one. Men, you are available. You guys can come out to these events as well. Individuals who do not have the virus, I want them to come too because there's many people who are dealing with somebody who have it or, you know, they just want to be educated about it and they're like, you know, I don't want it to be no deal breaker. Let me come learn so I can know what I need to know. You know, so this is an opportunity for us to mix and mingle with men and women and also individuals who do not have the virus, but just are willing to learn. OK, so the respect to be across the board um, pertains to everybody and to be sensitive, but just know that I'm opening the door for everybody to come, you know, learn. This is educational. This is just not us just sitting here just like, oh, oh, oh woe is me. No, this is an educational time. This is a time for you to get your clarity so you can get your acceptance, so you can get what you need to move forward and maintain your life with herpes until we're blessed enough with a vaccine or a cure. But until then, your life going to be running and jumping until that happens. So now when you get these things, you know, we're blessed with these things, that's just not bogged down with, um, with, um, with trauma. This is what happens. People end up getting cured from stuff and still dealing with the trauma behind it because they never took the time to heal. I refuse. Like, I refuse that we get a vaccine and you guys are trauma. Y'all still, still dealing with the trauma scared. Like, oh, my God. I don't have it anymore. What if I get it again? I don't know what to do. Now you're not even living still because you said you want a vaccine, got the vaccine, or got the cure. And still, in t you are still traumatized. Um, so that's where it's very important for us now to heal. So when those things come to us, we're in good space and we go back out here and prevent ourselves from ever getting the virus again because we're so educated. But if we get a vaccine or a cure and y'all turn around and not educate yourself and not accept yourself, you will be back with this virus. I'm going to call you out. You will be back. So with that being said, guys, I also want to tell y'all that I will have this Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, the monthly support group session. This is vital. This is for men and women. Jump on. I'm going to have to have Mr. Rich get on. Very nice guy. He also is an activist. He also wrote a book about his experience with the vaccine, the herpes vaccine, guys. Yes, it has been a vaccine out there, but it's not approved by the FDA. But he did go and he was a participant of it. So he's going to share his experience with it. And what he believes that we need to do to get this va vaccine pushed or get a cure. Um, he also has a petition out. I'm going to put that in from the law. Please sign the petition. Y'all say y'all won't change, but y'all not doing nothing. Please sign the petitions. If you see them, sign them. Y'all think this is going to come out the sky. It ain't. Okay, I'm being so honest. Like I look at the numbers on these petitions and it saddens me. 
Because at the end of the day, y'all, everybody's begging for something. But we are, it's many of us in these groups. I got a group of 600 and something. It ain't no way that I tell y'all to sign something or we should sign this because you've been begging for something and none of y'all have truly signed it. It it should be if the number is, if it ain't been nobody signed, all 600 of us to sign it. And now he should go to another group that got 10,000. All 10,000 of them should sign it. And then we go to another group and all 500, 500 people of them should sign it. It ain't no way that we should be struggling to get 600 signatures. It ain't no way. It saddens me. It really do to know that we're not doing our part, but we're begging for something, but we don't want to do the work. My whole thing, if you say you want a cure, sign a petition. I challenge you. If you say you want something, you sign, you're going to sign Mr. Rich's petition because he's trying to do what he needs to do. He has been a person who did the vaccine. He knows that it's working. It can work. So let the person go ahead of us who knows the stuff and can fight it. Okay. He was, a, he was there. So, let's support Mr. Rich in this, guys. You say you want something, this is your opportunity to help the community, so sign. So, the information will be below to sign. Make sure you sign. Make sure you get onto that support group session with us, with Mr. Rich, so you can ask him as many questions. It will not be long. We'll be on there for a good 30 minutes, talking to him, asking him questions. We're going to jump off. We, won't, we do not want to hold him long. Make sure you get on. Make sure you get on. Matter of fact, I'm not even recording it. I love y'all, but I'm not, I'm probably not going to record it. Um, because at the end of the day, I have learned something. When you record people, make people make excuses not to get on. Okay. This is your opportunity to get on. I strongly suggest you get on eight o'clock Eastern time. I've been telling you guys about that. I put it on a Saturday for a reason. I put it on a Saturday for a reason. All right. If you had a job that you can listen to it, put it on your phone, put your headphones in and just listen. I'm trying to tell y'all, you want to get on this. This is your opportunity to get on. And many of you are like, believe but record it. You know, I have to work. I understand that. But at the end of the day, I really want you guys to know that sometimes stuff is not going to be able to be played back for you because you're not available. Okay? This is just something for us to learn. And this is just a life lesson. Everything is not going to always be on replay for you just because you missed it. Okay? So an individual who want to get on, get on. Now, if you got to work, I can't stop you. Get your dollars. You got to pay your bills. But I'm trying to tell y'all, it ain't going to always be opportunities for things to come back to you. So you got to take the opportunities when they're given to you because opportunities don't always come back around. All right? They just don't always come back around. All right? So with that being said, I love you guys. I want y'all to get on that. Make sure you get your tickets for the Overcoming Gathering Conference Tour. I want to see you guys. If you want to do a session with me throughout this month, we're doing. I'm doing really well talking to as many people I can talk to. I want to talk to more of you guys if you need to talk. Bit slash I have it. Y'all know, ladies. Come on. Come with it. Y'all want to get into the private support group. I'm available to you. Hit me up on Facebook. Send me a private message. Send me a friend request, and I will add you to the group. Okay? And, um... That's it, guys. I love you guys. I hope this helps you to realize it starts with you. You want to see a difference in the herpes community? Start with you first. Talk to y'all soon.